Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Edition guide we have a Druid build and you'll be going the unique Drovier archetype to apply many fun bonuses to our whole party including pets such as the Gorilla Animal Aspect for higher bonuses to trip and speaking about trip even the very rare and unique Aspect of the Wolf spell that will grant trip for free to every single one of your party members as a swift action, so the knockdowns will fly with this build. We are going the Angel Mythic Path 2 to have access to the very powerful Angel Mythic spells while merging our spellbook for even faster spellbook progression. I know Azata might be thematically more appropriate for a nature character, but I'm afraid it does not have nowhere near as much synergy with this build as Angel. The Angel spells and abilities are that good and so is the spell merge for the highest amount of power as early as possible. It doesn't need any saying that your damage will fly as this is mostly a melee focused build. With many attacks per round, extreme damage, amazing critical range and damage too, even without the Trickster Mythic Path. And as far as they see we don't need it because we have an absurd amount of reach, so we can poke the enemy from super far away with our full shard, and of course we can always rely on our trusty pet. So without further ado, let us get into our Drovier Druid Angel build. Alright, so when it comes to Druid, we'll be going with Drovier, one of the most unique archetypes. You gain a special ability that lets you empower your whole party, even pets and your own character, with one of the animal aspect spells. The good thing about this is that some of these can be quite powerful, especially because by default they are personal only spells, which means you would not be able to cast them on allies. And honestly, the best ones are the one you start out with at level 4, and then the last one at level 14. For animal aspect, ideally you want to pick Gorilla for the huge plus 4 competence bonus to combat maneuvers, including, and here we go, Trip. Trip isn't just good for crowd control, but also killing enemies. While it is true that most of my builds don't focus on trip, the main benefit of Gorilla Aspect, Share to Party, is to further enhance your already very powerful tripping pets. And the Druid is a class that gains a full scaling pet as early as level 1. A plus 4 bonus to the tripping attempts of all these pets is amazing. The other animal aspects aren't that useful, besides Aspect of the Wolf. By default, this is a pretty rare spell that usually only Druids and Rangers get. And the best part is it will grant all allies a trip attack as a swift action and even enhance these trip attempts too by a plus two. This is truly powerful. Once again, not just because it works on every single party member, even your very own tripping pets. And since it will only cost a swift action, you can still unleash all of your attacks at the same round you use this. And if you're wondering how to use them, just go to your abilities tab, select the ones you want, for example, Aspect of the Wolf, click on it, and there we go, our whole party is now buff with it. Every 10 minutes, a new stack will be drained. The others are mostly passives, but in the case of Aspect of the Wolf in particular, for the extra trip attack, once again, go back to your abilities tab, and you'll have gained this new ability here, Aspect of the Wolf Trip with a Fang icon. Ideally, you would just right-click on it to set it to auto-cast as a swift action. And as I said, everyone else will also get it. All of your allies, including pets. The only downside is the Drovier Druid does not get any white shape at all, not the elementals or the animal forms. However, they can still use spells to change into other shapes, including the ultimate spell Shape Change, which also lets them become any of the most powerful dragon forms. And as you are merging with Angel, you'll be able to use this powerful spell as early as Chapter 3. Now, as far as race, I'm afraid human truly is the way to go here. Druids don't get any bonus feat at all, so we are going to be very feat starved. It's only around your last feat or so that you truly really have something free, I'd say. So in a way you can still go with another race. It's just going to delay your power acquisition, especially for the early game and some of the mid game too. Now for the backgrounds, I'd say you have three choices, Craftsman and Lumberjack or Regional and Warrior of the Lenorm Kings if you want to use the Grave Singer Great X. I have many builds for that already, so for this one I'll be doing something different. Notice that by default Druids don't have the best weapon proficiencies, Scimitar is pretty much the only one that really stands out out of all of the weapons they can use. However, Scimitars are not rich weapons, so I'd say the beginning of the game can be somewhat tough with them, because you won't have high armor class. To compensate you can go for for shards, which is what I'll be doing for this build, as they are not only rich weapons, but have the highest critical range possible. However, you can only get proficiency into four shards starting from level 3, 
So from level 1 to level 2 you have to make do with other weapons like scimitars. If you want to get a rich weapon at these early levels, you can also go for the warrior and mercenary background for proficiency with long spears. On the other hand, you can also just use scimitars and have someone cast the enlarged person spell on you for free reach. So the choice is up to you. Now as far as ability points, I want this druid to be more of a melee focused character, especially since we are merging with angels, so we'll still get the best spells in the game, including pretty much the best area of effect spell for damage. You don't need high wisdom for that, the angel spells are that good. So I'll be focusing into strength, and we want 19. 12 dexterity and 12 constitution is more than enough, we have rich weapons, we have extremely overpowered defensive spells from angel. I would dump charisma to 8 and then increase wisdom to 16, the rest we can get through headbands, so that you can still cast all of the spells in the game, including level 9 and level 10 angel spells. If you don't want to dump charisma, you can dump intelligence instead. It's just that charisma doesn't have any bonuses for us. As far as skill points, lore nature and also perception, we do have some decent wisdom, especially for lore nature due to the nature sense, and the rest of the points are up to you. I would still consider use magic device to cast some arcane scrolls, as always, the Charisma penalty doesn't matter, it's very easy to increase UMD through other ways, such as buffing gear bonuses, and you might as well go with Athletics for the last one, since we'll have very high strength. Now, as far as our level 1 feats, well, it's the usual for two-handed characters, and this build is going two-handed, so power attack, and then cleave. I've had some people question why cleave. It's the same reason as always, you can get two attacks just at level 1. Druids, by default, as medium base attack bonus characters, can only get their second attack at level 8. That takes forever to get, I mean, the entire chapter 1, for example, and some of chapter 2 as well. I would rather have as much power as early as I can, and I do think this makes for much more smoother plays. Plus, even if cleave will become useless once you get your second attack, it is a prerequisite for cleaving finish, which remains useful through the entire game. As far as your pet, any of the tripping pets, I prefer the dog and the wolf. There's also the Triceratops if you want a dinosaur, the boar, and even the lizard too if you want something different. For deity, I need that allows good alignments, as we are going angel. Gosra is the god of nature, and then you can also be neutral good, perfect for an angel character. For level 3, as I said before, I really want to go with four shards. For something different, I used to pick them before being converted to the Grave Singer. Four shards are still some of my favorite weapons, however. The reach plus high critical range is amazing. Thankfully, druids, just like clerics, will always learn all of the spells they can have when you level up, so you don't have to bother picking spells for them. At level 4, increase strength, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels for as high AB and damage as possible. At level 5 is when I would pick Clipping Finish. For the extra attack whenever we kill an enemy, always useful to have, as you'll be doing very high damage, and this is even better with rich weapons, so the enemies don't have to be as close to one another for this feat to work. At level 7, the choice is simple for any medium base attack bonus character. Outflank, no doubt. At level 9, I would get the recently added Lunge feat. As I said, Druids are medium base attack bonus, so they can only get it starting from level 9. Lunge will add extra reach for your for shard attacks. And since for shards are already rich weapons, we'll have even bigger reach for our melee attacks. Especially when we later add size enhancing spells to the mix, like legendary proportions. At level 11, the choice is also simple. Improve at critical and for shard, or the other weapon you went with, like great access, if you prefer. At level 13, well, you might as well qualify for Lord Master now, because the reality is from level 14 onwards, you won't really gain much as a Drovir. The capstone ability, which lets you use all of your shared aspects at will, can be fun, but the thing is, by default, they can be used 10 minutes per class level. At 14 and 15, it's already more than one hour duration. It's certainly more than enough. Since we are going Lore Master, we need to get first one Meta Magic feat, and I'd suggest Bolster Spell to further increase the damage of your most powerful damage spells in the game. The Orbital Strikes from Angel, Boat and Storm of Justice. They don't care about difficulty class, which is why we don't need high wisdom. They always hit regardless of the enemy saving or not for the full amount. Truly OP. And for other damage boosts like Empower and Maximize, we can just rely on Meta Magic Broads instead. At level 15, to qualify for Lore Master, all that's missing is Skill Focus and then Arcana or World. We are just picking it for Lore Master, it doesn't matter which one you get. Then at level 16+, plus, enter Lore Master at last. For your first secret, I would do the usual Combat Feat, and then Shattered Defenses, so we bypass Weapon Focus and the rather useless Dazzling Display. For level 17, 
Boon Companion so our pet can fully scale to our levels, as Lord Master will not continue to increase your pet's progression. For our level 18 Secret, Rogue Secret, and Opportunist for the very powerful extra attack per round. For level 19, this is the only feat I'd say can be anything you want. Remember in the beginning of the video I said the last one would be a free for all? But to me, Improved Initiative. Kinda late, but just in time for the toughest of the Demon Lord battles at the end game. Now your last Lord Master Secret at 20 can be anything you want. Ideally, spells from other classes. Amusingly enough, Druids don't get the Mass Heal spell, so if you want it, you can pick it here, or you can just cast it from scrolls because of how I use magic device. Wizard can also offer some fun spells, such as Sense Vitals for sneak attack, Fiery Body for critical hit immunity, and we also have Cleric and Eagle Soul for a plus 4 sacred to strength, which is the one I'll be picking. As an angel, you can extend this to 24 hours duration if you want. Alright, now let's talk mythic progression for our angel druid. As a melee character, close to the abyss is definitely the best for the extra gore attack per round, and as an angel, you have spells to add extreme damage to this. For mythic level 1, well, the same for almost any full spellcaster, abundant casting, even better in the case of merged angels, because it also counts for the angel spells. Then at mythic 2, extra mythic and improved abundant casting. At mythic 3, the last one, greater abundant casting. As a merged druid angel, you'll have extremely fast spell casting progression for both normal and mythic spells, the same as a cleric or wizard. Sorcerers and oracles on the other hand have it kinda slow, so it is in your best interest to max out your spell slots as early as you can, even as a mostly melee build, because remember, your powerful buffs also come from these slots. Be sure to pick Mythic Spellbook Druid here to merge, and there we go, we'll have all of the Angel spells added to our spellbook. Except to normal progression, this will be done way earlier, at around level 10 or so. If you are a bit lost when it comes to the merging mechanics, please remember that I already have a guide explaining it, you can check to the site here or in the video description. For Mythic Rank 4, the usual. I'd say from Mythic Rank 4 onwards, you have two ways of progressing this build. If you want to focus on your melee side as soon as you can, then of course you want to pick more martial inclined feats. On the other hand, you can also pick extra mythic here, then enduring spells, and at mythic 5, greater enduring spells, so that all of your buffs, including angel buffs, will last 24 hours. I already have some builds with that, so for this one, I'll go for a more melee side. So mythic critical and for shard. Then, as far as your angel abilities, I also have a guide explaining every one of these in depth. Please check that out if you want, for now I'll keep it simple. Everlasting Flame is kind of a must-have, otherwise you're sort of having ability will last super low. For Mythic 5, ever ready at last. And remember, even without this, you have other ways of getting more attacks of opportunity, besides combat reflexes like the Clemency of Shadows Crusade Relic Ring. For your Halo ability, Piercing Race as usual. For Mythic 6, Mythic Power Attack. We want our damage to be as high as possible. And then Abolish Gaio for bonus damage against some of the most annoying demons, including melee damage too. For Mythic 7, if you have a Skull to provide Pounce to the Mythic Charge, otherwise I would rather go with Mythical Beast to make our pet even more powerful than it already is. And then Solar Winds to get resistances against some very rare types such as Unholy, Holy, Divine and Force. I don't think anything else can get these resistances, no other Mythic Path that is. For Mythic 8, Extra Mythic, well in my case I'll be going with Mythic Charge or like I said you can pick it before instead of Mythical Beast, just swap the order. And then Speed of Light, one of the most OP angel abilities, or two additional attacks, that's one over the Haste spell, which is already OP on its own, and then the extremely useful ability of casting all your level 7 and lower spells as swift actions. For Mythic 9 you might as well go with Last Stand as usual, just in case. Or if you want a shapeshifting character, you can also go with Master Shapeshifter, and as a matter of fact, pick it earlier too if you prefer like let's say instead of mythical beast. Since angels can actually get a spell that automatically revives them at around this mythic rank, I think I'll ignore last stand and pick master shapeshifter because why not? Turning into a super powerful dragon is pretty fun and fits the druid theme. For your last halo ability, either flame of life or burning bright. As for mythic rank 10, I'd personally pick mythic initiative since we get a normal one kinda late, at level 19 only. Alright, now let's talk gear for our Druid Angel. For the amulet, as usual, for Alexius, nothing really is as good. And before that, you can use amulets that increase initiative. Don't bother with amulets of natural armor, as your Druid themselves can just cast Bark Skin. For the actual armor slot, Druids cannot wear metal armor at all, no matter the armor type. But we do get some unique Druid gear. For example, we get Animalistic Perseverance, 
which isn't really that good, I'm afraid. On the other hand, the Seal of Madness can be quite powerful. It comes from the Crusade Relic Remains of the Colorless One, that you can get at around Chapter 4. It is a unique breastplate made of crystal that can be worn by druids. At the start of every combat, all enemies, the range is so massive, I mean 50 foot, that it really is all enemies around you, have to pass a will saving throw or become confused for two rounds. While the DC might not seem that high, will tends to be the weakest of enemy saves, and there are some ways of reducing it easily at the start of battle, such as the Shaken Aura from Frightful Aspect for minus 2, and the Display of Power Belt for yet another minus 2 to will. Otherwise, since armor class doesn't matter for us, we have Extreme Reach, and also a path with high AC to mount. You can go with, for example, Haramakis, such as Divine Guidance for extra saving throws. For the robe and shirt slot, we have yet another druid unique gear, the Web Strider Shirt. This is the same as the Web Strider Padded Armor I mentioned before in other guides that increases dexterity. I mean, it comes from the same Crusade Relic, the Altar of the First Retriever, except you have to choose to turn it into a shirt instead of Padded Armor. Whenever it is worn by a druid, all of your druid spells will be cast as if one level higher, and here's the best part. As a merged druid angel, it also works for the angel spells because they are added to your druid spell book. So even more damage with Storm of Justice, or higher duration and effects from some of your other buffs. Now, ultimately, you can of course go for the Robe of the Seven Sins, as it's triple the caster level bonus of the Web Strider. For the belt slot, at the start, belts of strength, then strength and constitution, ultimately physical perfection for plus six to all physical scores. On the other hand, since we have high critical range with four shards, or even the Gravesinger Axe if you prefer, feel free to go with the Mangling Frenzy belt for a very powerful 46 extra points of slashing damage on critical hits. Just remember, this requires you to be raging, so ideally if you have a Scald. And if you want to fight in dragon forms for a shape-shifting druid, the Lizard Tail belt can also help, for the huge bonuses to AC, plus 3 morale and then plus 8 circumstance, for the first round. For gloves, as usual, Francis gift, if you want some extra damage with two-handed weapons. Otherwise, the other gloves aren't that useful for this character. End game, you can go with the gloves of the Death Dealer because you get sneak attack for free anyways, through the book Baphomet the Uncaged. And there's always the gloves of the Enduring Wizard for extra hit points when casting some spells. Boots aren't really that important to you as well, I just go for the boots of Stampede, as I have a skull to provide pounce when charging for the huge extra bonus. For headbands and helmets, at the start, headbands that increase your wisdom. But eventually, as always, the Hat of the Bitter End is by far the best, for the super useful stacking bonus to attack rolls when killing enemies. And then you can combine it with the Broken Trickster Glasses, as it will already grant you enough wisdom to cast all of the angel spells in the game, druid ones as well. The tanky property is fun too, but you're almost never going to need to rely on it. For cloaks, you have two choices, cloaks of resistance with the highest modifier, or the special angel mythic cloak, the bound of possibility, if you want higher spell damage when casting our OP angel orbital strikes, both of justice and storm of justice, as they are uncapped, so the higher your caster level with them, the higher the damage. For rings, as usual, the ring of imminent demise, since we are two-handing, the bane of spirit ring is just here to remind you that it has a very powerful synergy with Angel. Although you don't have to use it on your Angel themselves, since they can just convert their damage into Holy anyways, all damage. Because of the Solar Winds Halo ability that grants extremely rare force resistance to all of your party, the hit point cost to activate the ring is actually minimal. Just look at that, just 2 points, instead of 10. So it really is even better. Otherwise, you can go with the Ring of Evasion, the Ring of Guiding Star 2 for a bonus initiative, since this character doesn't have that high initiative compared to others. As far as Bracers, we really don't have anything special here. For the beginning of the game, you can just stay with the engraved Lucky Bracers, and ultimately the Bracers of Abrupt Onslaught, once again because we can get Sneak Attack for free end game. Alright, now let's talk weapons and quick slots. For this build, I went with four shards, for something different, as they have the ultimate critical range and also reach. Not as high critical damage as the Gravesinger X, however, but I got a lot of comments saying they were quite tired of it, so here we are. The Mighty Blow of Good is my preferred choice. If your character is good aligned, it can deal extra damage against demons, plus it already comes with Evil Outsider Bane, though you won't need to cast Crusader's Edge on it. For other four shards, I already have a guide here that has their full progression from beginning to end game, 
so feel free to check it at the side or in the pinned comments down below. Another very interesting weapon is Fiery Spell Weaver, because it grants an extra bonus to caster level. As far as quick slots, it's usually the same package for most spellcasters. The Grandmaster's Rod for the ultimate damage possible, especially when you apply Bolster as a meta magic feat, a greater quicken meta magic rod to quicken once again our Angel Orbital Strikes. Mostly Storm of Justice, when it comes to Bolt of Justice, you can quicken it automatically to the speed of light Angel Sword ability. The Devouring Lust Meta Magic Rod is here to highly increase spell damage even before the Grandmaster's Rod, as Grandmaster's only comes at Chapter 5. Meanwhile, Devouring Lust can be found right at the beginning of Chapter 3. Jarsigax, once again, for extra damage on hit, and we can convert it to Holy as an Angel. As this build went for a more melee focus without greater enduring spells, you can also use the Extend Meta Magic Rods to increase the duration of your buffs. And there's always the Signet of Hauser's Pretilio 2 to increase any skill of choice, although this character doesn't really rely that much on skills as some others. And of course, to use Magic Device, you can use any scroll you want. Most importantly, Transformation, to set your base attack bonus to high. The same of a fighter for extra attack spell round, and even higher damage through Mythic Power Attack. This will block your spell casting, but the thing is, if you wanted to cast spells, well, you would just use buffs, and then once battle starts, storm and bolt of justice. Otherwise, if you just wanted to melee, being blocked out of casting spells doesn't matter, and the duration will be low enough that you can quickly replenish your buffs afterwards and so on. Well, alright friends, so this was it from my Angel Druid guide. If you found it useful, please remember to like, subscribe, also become a channel member. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends.